S-Log 2 is great for color grading, gives you way more dynamic range. Um, you may have noticed right over here in Picture Profile 2, it was, this is a little bit more blown. What are you talking about? S-Log 2, you can see, I mean, it's, 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 you can't see it completely clear, but we're not, I didn't, um, exposed for this area but you can you can see much who is here. listening to this clearly this one needs to be color graded and this is what it looks like when i color grade it so as you can see is it bruh that's what it looks like when you color grade it takes a little bit more work that's trash for YouTube videos, I like to rap okay them, so I'm not i gotta fix this <laughs> What's good, creative family? I'm Just Be Wise, and today we are going to re-explore the Sony Picture Profiles. Now, way back when, I tried to make this, well, I didn't try to make this, but I think I made actually a pretty good video, except when I was talking about S-Log 2, because I didn't know what I was talking about, okay? So, what we're gonna do today is one, address my foolishness, because I didn't know what I was talking about. Two, talk about the differences of what I was doing then compared to what I'm doing now, and three, give you the details of the picture profile itself and a little peek into my color grading process so you guys can know what to get into. All right, let's get it. Now, there are legitimate concerns when using S-Log2 on the A7 II. That took a lot longer to say than I wanted it to, but we got it out. And now I'm gonna lose track because I was so proud of myself for saying it. Struggling. It does start at an extremely high ISO at 1600 ISO. Now, if you need to bump up your ISO at all, you can run the risk of introducing a lot of noise and grain into your footage, but I'm usually in a controlled environment to where I don't have to worry about that. However, if you do have to worry about that, that's something to think about. Also, it does take a little work on the back end with color grading and everything like that. But bruh, I was completely off by trying to compare what I can do in the S-Log2 to what I was doing with the other picture profile. Now, mind you, that picture profile works and it was better because at the time it took me a lot longer to do my editing. I have a little bit better of a workflow now, so it doesn't take as long to do some things that I was doing before. In my defense, I was completely intimidated by color grading any footage at all. And in addition to that, I was still relatively new to Sony. So if that's a defense at all, there you have it. But now knowing what I know now, it just makes way more sense for me to just go ahead, do the work on the front end, save a color graded profile in Premiere to kind of help streamline my editing process and then work from there. Now, it's not enough to just go ahead and switch to the S-Log2 picture profile that's already built into the camera. Like I said in that prior video before, I did take from the website 4kshooters.net the details of how to change this profile to work as best as it can. So I'm gonna run through the details of that right now so that you guys can just go ahead and put that in. So I'm gonna put it up on the screen as well as show you guys how to get to it and do everything right now. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is pull up your picture profile option. Once you have that, select PP1. So we're gonna leave the black level to zero. The first change we're really gonna make is change that gamma to obviously S log two. So once you have that change, go ahead, head down to black gamma and make sure, I believe you don't have to change it, but make sure it reads middle and zero. Now your knee, it should be left at auto. I believe it's already set to auto, so just go ahead and leave that. Not much to do here. We can just move on to the color. Color mode is gonna be pro. And we're actually gonna add a little saturation, change the saturation up to three. Color phase, you can leave that at zero. Now your color depth is where you're gonna have to do a little bit of work. So when we go to the color depth, you can go ahead and just follow what you see here on the screen. Red, five, green, two, blues, two, cyan, two, magenta, negative two, and yellow, add two. All right, we're gonna hop down to detail, and detail is gonna be negative two. Now for the next part of 
this you're gonna have to go to adjust and here we're gonna set up mode it's gonna be manual and then again just follow what you see right here vh balance zero black white balance type five limits three crispening three and also a high level detail two and that's it there you have it should be all set Now that we have the correct profile settings in place, let's go ahead and set up that saved grade in Premiere so that it's ready whenever you are. Finally, it took like a thousand tries for me to get that. Oh man, getting too hot trying to do this. Burning. Okay. I sure do have a long video. I sure do have a long video. This is, this is crazy. All right, so anytime I start to do my color grade, I like to start off with in adjustment layer. So adjustment layer, you're gonna come down here to this little paper and it's just gonna be to add and click adjustment layer. Your adjustment layer video settings should already be set to the same thing that is your sequence and you just click okay. Yeah, you come drop that adjustment layer right over the top of your footage and just drag it out. Now, the adjustment layer is where we're gonna do all of our grading. The only thing I would suggest to actually do on the video file itself is to do the color balance. I mean, I'm sorry, not the color balance, the white balance, <laughs> but we're not going to go into an in-depth um, color grading tutorial today. We can talk about it another time here. We're just going to teach you how to save your presets. So let's go ahead, go back to the adjustment layer and let's start grading. And in Premiere, the easiest place to color grade is at the colors tab, which is at the top. And now that we're in the colors tab, we're gonna come over to the right side of the panel and we're just gonna do some adjustments here. Hold on, I gotta adjust this. I have two screens, so my uh, color grading is on one screen and I have all this on one screen. So let me make this look like how your screen would look. Okay, so this is probably what it looks like on your screen, okay. Good. So now, all right. So what we want to do is go ahead and start grading the foliage. Oh yeah. Yeah. That just happened. got to say more work. All right. So what we want to do is go ahead and start grading your footage so we can just adjust. Let's say we raise this con uh, the contrast a little bit. Uh, I'm going to raise the hot. Now nah, let's, let's drop the highlights, raise the shadows. Now nah, let's drop that. Yeah, that looks good. Now this is not the grade I have for this, this is just something quick so I can show you guys how to go ahead and save a preset after you've graded everything. So um, let's go ahead and save this as a preset. This looks good enough for right now. Let's go ahead and save it. So the way to save it is at the top right hand, right where it says Lumetri color, we're gonna go ahead and hit those three bars right there. So let's go ahead and hit those three bars and would you look at that save preset is right there. Now, hold on, before we actually do that, I just want you guys to know, you can spend a good amount of time dialing in how you want it to be saved. And all of these panels here that you see, all of these panels will be saved in your preset. So you can spend a good amount of time and have it saved, save your preset, bam. Let's go ahead and save this as uh, YT, color and go ahead and save it. And now where do you find this preset? If you come back over to the left side, you'll see the effects panel. You go to the effects panel, click on preset and right there, boom, it's already saved. And you just drag and drop into your adjustment layer. Now, obviously you wouldn't actually do it on this one because you already made the adjustments, but on a new adjustment layer in your next project, you would just come drag and drop it right in and then you're as good as done. You're golden. And let's say you want to actually modify a little bit. Everything's already set the way we had it. And now we can adjust it again later. That simple. I hope that helps you guys deal with some of the difficulties of working with S-Log2. But really, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Don't just use it because people are saying it's good. You know, really, all I'm trying to say is find out whatever process works best for you that's going to help you to be consistent with putting out the content that you're trying to put out. And it's going to be the best that you can do at that possible 
time. When I made that previous video, it took me way too long to figure out any kind of color grade and that color grade was bad as you saw. So you don't have to do something just because people are saying it's good. People appreciate your work because they, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, I'm rambling now, probably just because I miss you guys, it's been too long. So if you are still here at the end of the video, oh Jesus, they're enjoying the show. If you're still here at the end of the video, I just wanna say you guys are the real MVP. Thank you so much. If you like the video, like the video. And if you're new here, please feel free to join the family. Subscribe below. And as always, I gave you some tools to create. Now go be great. Peace. That's, that's a good ending right there. Ha <laughs> ha.